Good afternoon, I'm Alex and welcome to another Rialta Owners Group of America Owners Tech video. Today we're going to be discussing the issues and operations surrounding the onboard generator on your Rialta. The onboard generator on a Rialta has always brought stress to Rialta owners at one time or another. Whether it's just not operating properly or isn't operating at all, there's a lot of different factors that affect how your generator is going to run or if it's going to run at all. We're going to try to eliminate a few of the problems that are common and we're going to try to explain why they happen and how you can prevent them. On board this 1999 Rialta is the Onion 2800 series Camp Power. It delivers a total of a 120 volts of alternating current so you can run household appliances. Regular household appliances run on 120 volts of alternating current. The DC or direct current that comes off your battery is meant for your 12 volt systems. This onboard generator receives its fuel directly from the main fuel tank for the motorhome. Here you see an inline filter, the line going up to the carburetor, the oil filler and checking port is next door to it, and a 5 amp fuse is off to the left next to the starter button. But behind it is an altitude adjustment gauge. As you get in higher altitudes up in the mountains and other areas where there is less oxygen in the air, you need to adjust this for the altitude. This opens up the standing orifice on the carburetor so it takes in more cubic inches of air so that it's taking in the necessary amount of oxygen to support combustion. If you live in a higher altitude area and you're having issues with operating your generator, you may want to check this and make sure it's adjusted correctly to the altitude for the region that you are in. It simply rotates left or right and as you see here, there's a little bit of Loctite left over that was removed here. If you're going to be at one consistent altitude for an extended period of time, for example, if you live high in the mountains, you may want to set this to your altitude and then squirt a little bit of a Loctite on here so this doesn't vibrate out of adjustment. Now, before you head out to a campground where you're going to be off-grid, you should do a check of your generator to make sure that everything is in place the way it needs to be. First off, make sure that there's no obvious leaks or smells or anything coming off. Check to make sure that your oil is up to the optimum level. And remember that if you have less than a third of a tank of gas in some vehicles, less than a quarter of a tank, the generator will not run. This is a safety mechanism that's in place to make sure that you don't run your generator and your tank dry while you're off grid so you cannot move your Rialta when it's time to get out of there. If everything checks out and it looks like everything is the way it's supposed to be, go ahead and test start your generator. It may take up to three tries. Now according to Onan, when it first starts, it's going to surge up and down. This is normal for the generator. You need to wait for that to level off before you put it under the load of any appliances. <laughs> Now we've managed to get our generator up and running in just four presses from the outside starter. The remote starter inside should actually work the exact same way. Always check your generator before you head out on the road to make sure that it's running properly. If it suddenly doesn't start when you get to your location, check those few items. What is the level of your fuel gauge? Are there any leaks? Is there any blockage to the separate exhaust pipe that goes to the generator? Because if you backed into a spot and that's obstructed, that can also keep it from running, running properly, and in actuality, cause a hazard. When you have the generator running and it's finally smoothed out, you want to engage the major appliances slowly. It's going to go under load. And again, according to the manufacturer, Onan, you may have some temporary surging that should level out in less than two minutes. If the generator happens to stall once it goes under load, let it rest for a minute, take it off load by turning all the switches off for the major appliances inside the Rialta, restart the generator, wait for it to level off, warm up for three to five minutes, and then try again. We're going to start the air conditioner off on its lowest setting, which is just the fan. The generator, whether you heard it or not in the background, and likely you didn't, 
paused for just a second and then it bounced right back off. There was no surge. Picking up to the high fan. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to engage the air conditioning unit. The air conditioning unit is now on. It's on low. It's already producing cold air and the generator is not surging or dropping off. We still have one more step. Kicking the AC on high, you may hear that the generator started to surge again, but leveled off in less than five seconds. We now have full AC blowing into the coach unit itself. It's sustained fully by the generator. And we're going to be very comfortable in a very short period of time. You may be asking yourself, well, how much can I do with the generator at one time? Well, that's actually determined by the generator itself. It's going to let you know if it can't support what's going on. Right now, we have the air conditioner running on high, and I want to heat up some water so I can have a cup of tea without having to use the propane. There's a slight pause and a slight thump, and then the generator catches up right away. Again, if it stalls out, it means that it's not handling the load that's there. A few things that you can do. First, you could try turning off one of the appliances, or at least just turning them down. Second, recheck all the systems on the generator just to make sure it's sustainable. It has the right amount of fuel, the oil's up, the exhaust isn't blocked, and it's not overheating. A properly running generator is the difference between being able to go off grid, as many of us like to do from time to time, or having to stay on the grid in a more conventional campsite wrong with either. Or if you do go off-grid, you're limited in time to the amount of charge that your coach batteries can hold. If you have the generator, it gives you more options and more ability on board. If you park, for example, running the coach air conditioning unit certainly makes it more comfortable inside. In order to understand how to maintain your generator properly, you should probably understand how it functions. Combustion motors are actually fairly simple. They use evaporated fuel, air, and a combustion source in order to produce an explosion in a contained area. You have your fuel, you have your air, you have your fire. It's the fire pyramid, just like you learned about in fire prevention class back when you were in grade school. You take any one of those three components away, and it all stops. So what are some of the things that can cause those machines not to operate properly? Well, first off, if you take away the fuel source, either your fuel tank is too low or the fuel's not getting to the cylinder. The second, the ignition, the spark, either there's no electricity going to the spark plug or the spark plug is covered at that tip that generates that spark. So you're not getting an ignition source or third, you're not getting air going into the carburetor to mix with the fuel so that combustion can be supported. It may actually help to think about the fuel and the supply kind of like this cup of hot tea. When the tea is hot, you see the vapors that come out of it. That evaporation is allowing the fluids to escape, but the solids to remain. When everything that can evaporate is evaporated, those solids left behind, that residue, is the same thing that happens to gasoline that's left over in your cylinder. This is where the varnishing comes from. You see, when we turn off the generator, that doesn't mean that the motor is no longer hot. It doesn't mean that there's no more fuel inside. What it means is that you're no longer supporting combustion. But the hot motor combined with the fuel that's still left behind allows that petroleum, it's evaporates, to go away. It leaves the residue behind and that's the varnishing. Over an extended period of time that varnishing can become very hard and very hard to get rid of. A good point to remember is that when you're running these generators for an extended period of time they are going to build up heat. I prefer to leave the access door open and the cover plate off so that there's additional air circulation around the motor. It is, after all, an air-cooled motor. There is no coolant running through the generator motor itself or the housing. So allowing it to breathe 
is going to help it to stay at a temperature where it's going to continue to operate well. Sometimes when you've stored your motor home for a period of time, even with the best stabilizers, you may wind up with an issue where the generator doesn't start. This may in fact be due to bed gumming. There's a product that I recommend, though I hold no interest in the company, like anything else, and it's called Seafoam. Seafoam gets added to your regular tank of gasoline, a whole can of seafoam to a whole tank of gas. Once it gets in, it helps to clean up those small block ports and clean up that varnish. It's especially handy in outboard motors and water ski craft and vehicles of that type. So it works very well on a small air-cooled motor, such as your generator. Once you have the seafoam into the system and it's integrated well with your gas, you're going to want to run the cycles on the generator several times to get the fuel up into the carburetor and then leave it. Don't try to force the start just because the seafoam's inside. It needs time to clean, just like my kids. So what you're going to want to do is get that seafoam laden gas up into the carburetor, allow it to sit, allow it to clean, and then several hours or the next day, try the start sequence again. You may see some smoking, you may see some sputtering, it may take you a little while to get it going, but once you've got it going for the season, as long as you maintain it, it will continue to serve you well. It is not necessary to put seafoam in with every tank of gasoline. As a matter of fact, I would recommend against that. It is a treatment. It's not that it's a standard. Other things that can prevent fuel from flowing through into the carburetor would be a fuel filter that is old or blocked. Remember to replace these on at least an annual basis. Also, change the oil according to the manufacturer's specifications. These instructions are available online at the Onan website. Make sure to use the proper grade oil, make sure it's topped off before you leave on a road trip, and make sure you take extra with you. It is, after all, a one-cylinder motor, and older motors, it's normal for them to burn a little bit of oil due to wear inside the cylinder. It really can't be prevented entirely, so keep a little bit of oil with you. When it burns off, you'll be able to top it off. Which brings us to a safety point. Never operate the generator while you're asleep. The off-gassing can create problems and you can be overcome and you don't even know it. Make sure you have a proper functioning, good condition CO detector as well as a propane detector inside your unit at all times. If you're using it while you're awake and the alarm goes off, immediately turn off the generator, leave the inside of the coach, leave the door open and allow the air to escape for several minutes. Only after the alarm stops sounding is it safe to go inside. If the alarm stops sounding, it doesn't mean that you go inside and stay there for an extended period of time. Go inside, open up the rest of the windows, let it fully ventilate, and do not use the generator or any other appliance if it happens to be a propane alarm until you find the source. A smooth up running generator isn't just a luxury item to most of us. It's a convenience that allows us to travel the roads of America and see the places we want to see without feeling like we're in a tent on four wheels. With simple maintenance and simple care and an understanding of how they work and how you need to take care of them, your generator can always be running and there when you need it. For more informational videos like this, go to the Rialto Owners Group of America channel on YouTube or just stay tuned to the webpage and we'll keep them posted up for you. For the Rialto Owners Group of America, I'm Alex. Keep it real tough.